Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel, it's Amethic Snakes, and this is part 3 of Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1. I do hope that you've been enjoying the gameplay so far. Part 2 was all about delving into Sherlock's past, and we got to learn more about what happened to his mother, who didn't really die of tuberculosis. So we're still trying to figure out what happened with her as well as what happened to the manor. But let's see what the game has in store for us because I actually have no idea. So it's always a surprise whenever I click continue. So in saying that, without further ado, I'm going to click on continue. Okay, so this was Stonewood Manor, and oh yes, yeah, so that's right, so we're going to pin this evidence. We are going to do a gilded cage. So, chaos unfolded. I visited the house of an old family friend and discovered evidence of recent mayhem. The gate was broken from the inside, so let's head on over to that old family friend's house. As if they were struck by a battering ram. I wonder how we managed not to hear any of this. It's as if a storm went through here. Destruction and trampled ground. Oh no. He was certainly under pressure. Oof, a contortionist you were not. Oh dear. Disjointed vertebrae. Difficult to say if it was a way to start or finish him off. Belt from a dressing gown. Curious. A kneecap reduced to splinters. A missing pinky. Middle-aged. It's none other than Theodore Gilden. Oh, no. oh boy, Sherlock. Another death means another question. And we shall answer the question. It's far too interesting to give it up to the police. Okay, let's check her case book. So the body of a man was found in the enclosed pen of a large animal. His right hand is missing its little finger. It is Theodore Gilden. The man suffered so many lethal injuries and fractures that the exact cause of death is difficult to determine. His legs are mangled and bloody. A dressing gown belt was found on the body. And let's have a look at our mind palace. Okay, so a fatal battering. The victim's body took a heavy beating, sustaining multiple injuries that ultimately proved fatal. Okay. Alright, let's have a look at here. Didn't we get to fly in it as children? I doubt it could hold my weight today. Hmm. A strong pull broke this leash. Poke the elephant with this. Really, people are hopeless.
pool of blood and saliva, possibly as a result of impact. Sherlock, take a picture of the footprint. It's valuable evidence. Ooh, use E to activate your camera and then to take a photo. The frame and viewfinder will turn white when you are aiming correctly. Okay. Um... This photograph can help us find the old article about the elephants. The front page was fascinating. It was hard to believe as a child. True. We may need it in our investigation. Okay. So John reminded me of a newspaper article from our childhood. It was the first time I had seen these beautiful creatures. I can check the newspaper's archive. It was a front page story written by a science journalist and would have been published 10 years ago. Okay. And then, as unbelievable as it may be, Cordona is home to an elephant. The creature is large enough to leave footprints 18 inches wide. Okay. And then, beside a small puddle of blood lay a bullhook, though the instrument was unstained. With an immense pull, the animal broke the steel chain that restrained it. Okay, so we could possibly go to the newspaper's archive to have a look. And we found out that Mr. Gildan owned a wild animal. Theodore Gildan kept a wild adult elephant on his property. So then um, let's try and pin this evidence and we need to check the newspaper's archive. So what is this? Stonewood Manor. Um, this one? I think it's this. Cardona Chronicle. Let's focus on that. I wonder if we could... Okay, we can't. Ooh, Garden Decorations Trader. Okay, is there anything else? An amount of attention that most can only dream of. We can't go. Oh, can we go inside? It's locked. Okay. All right. Let's see. Oh. Excuse me, just one question. I can't help you with that, sir. So everyone, I'm going to make a quick detour. Before we check out the Cordona Chronicle, I am going to quickly go to the Garden Decorations Trader and see whether any of the furniture from the Stonewood Manor is here and if we could possibly buy it off, okay? Landscapes and portraits, fine. My goods will brighten up your house. The Holmes family. A portrait depicting the pain of getting kids to sit still. Violet's portrait and sketch of a young boy. <gasps> yes, I'm gonna buy this. And this. <gasps> Enjoy your purchase. Okay, so now let's head on over to Cordona Chronicle. Cordona Chronicle. All right, let's go. Stop the presses. Who is Cordona's handsome stranger? Or nose bagger spurns local life? Wait, uh, no. Foppish foreigner hides dark past. I, uh, um... Oh, you've made quite the impression already, Mr. Holmes. You care to tell your side of the story? I'm quite certain I have no idea as to what you refer, and I am further certain I have no interest in indulging your gossip. Gossip? The truth will come out, but will only be heard if told well. Scandal, daring do, romance... These are the tools of every good journalist. Nothing travels faster or lasts longer than a great story. Young man, your tale will be told with or without you. My readers demand it. 
You already knew my name and seem aware of my doings here in Cordona. I presume this newspaper is your little endeavor? Yasmin Sertel, editor-in-chief of the Cordona Chronicle. Advocate of the free press, voice of the people, scourge of the silk stocking. Charmed, I'm sure. As an advocate of the free press, I trust you'll permit me to consult your archives? There are gaps in my knowledge of Cordona. Oh, so my work does have merit. Well, I think we can strike a bargain. I shall provide you access, and you let me keep writing about your exploits. So be it. Brooding bachelor builds bridges. Now that's character development. I guess I owe you my gratitude. What can I say? I've always enjoyed working with the Holmes. They whisper such interesting things. Okay. All right, so now where do we go? Can you satisfy my curiosity? Ex excuse me, what? I'm not sure I know. Ooh, how about this? May I ask for your assistance? Are you looking for trouble? Because I can find you some. Time to check your who, what, and what, Sherry. Who are you asking about what and dressed as what? So just to recap, so John reminded Sherlock of a newspaper article from their childhood. It was the first time they had seen these beautiful creatures. It was a front page story written by a science journalist and would have been published 10 years ago. So it would be 10 years ago, so 1870, people, journalists, section, front page. Let's search. Excellent. The Lord of All Beasts, written by Dr. Ian Menzies. Only a lucky few can claim to have beheld this planet's strangest and most wonderful fellow, the elephant. Said to be land's largest animal, this colossal yet friendly creature enchants all with its size, intelligence, and communication. Elephants are mammals, just like humans, and originate in Asia and Africa, despite feet that reach 18 to 25 inches in adult males. The elephant is surprisingly agile, and in concert with its prehensile trunk, can perform feats of remarkable dexterity. Elephants form strong emotional bonds with their loved ones. Some scientists have even reported witnessing signs of grief or happiness. Perhaps the question is not how much elephants resemble us, but how much we resemble them. Is that it? That's the article! Feeling old already. Okay, is there anything else in here? Nope, let's check our case book. So it does contain useful information about the life of the elephant. Okay. Oh, documents, yep. Yeah. I love the smaller moments where something from the past makes the case resonate and brings us closer together. All right. So the elephant Goliath may have attacked Theodore Gilden in order to break free. Okay, so now that we've found evidence, what do we do now? Okay, so what if... Let's track... Oops. Let's track this down. So let's go back to the manor of Theodore Gilden. Oh. Hog Heaven. I didn't see this before. A coal gas tank, enough to pump up an airship. It's seen a lot of use. The blade is worn from grinding. A sailor's knife, useful for cutting wet and thick ropes.
fresh signs of impact. A rough landing led to an altercation with this shed. Okay. Two evidence updated in New Mind Palace School. Oh, I think we can. Alright, let's have a look. Okay. What else? I don't think so. Hmm. Maybe. If that's right. You're not even trying, Sherry. Concentrate. Not even trying, Sherry. Concentrate. You're not even trying, Sherry. Concentrate. of rage, the elephant broke the chain and threw its victim on the ground with a fierce power. Escaping the scene, it pulled the body with it, but dropped it at the gate. At least some of this was witnessed by a third party who was hurled against the shed. The elephant can't have gone too far. I can still track it. Well, suppose you find it. Then what? Push it all the way back to the manor? Okay, let's check our case for. Okay, so this person was hit by the gate during the elephant's escape. Perhaps they saw what happened. And in regards to the animal, it escaped but could not have gone too far without attracting attention. So there was a witness to the chaos on Gildan's property. They dropped a knife and may have injuries from the fall. Okay. So, can I pin this? He was certainly under pressure. They might know, actually. They might know whether they've seen... Can you satisfy my curiosity? That's a question I can answer. Okay, so the elephant named Goliath crossed the Greek bridge in the direction of the forest where Theodore used to walk it. Okay. Alright, its tracks lead towards the forest. Um, so, I wonder...
Oh, there it is. <gasps> I see the tracks. The elephant barged into this cart of olive oil. What if we're lucky and he slipped and fell somewhere along the way? There it is. So let's follow the tracks. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Oh, what does this say? My gratitude to this island will grow. Chess is this tree I give to you from the most responsible citizen in Cordona, Theodore Gildon. Okay. Okay, let's have a look. Okay, hear me out. If an elephant falls in the forest and there's no one around to... John, no. Oh, you're such a killjoy. Okay, the forest clearing. Oh, what is this? Strange. It was hung with care. The game has escaped us for now. We'll find a solution to the elephant problem later. Oh. Dear Theodore, I am writing to you as a fellow islander. I value our friendship just as I value the lives of our people, although I am afraid this one-sided friendship cannot tie my hands any longer. I am being made to look weak in the eyes of your neighbors. They believe that your tree is a mockery and not a peace offering as you intended. The people are afraid. You refuse to give your elephant a proper trainer, instead using your own limited knowledge to teach it. It is an impossible situation. I admit that I did think of having the elephant forcibly taken and given to Mr. Tailheart, who has shown that he is quite capable of looking after the elephant bean, although she is female and far less frightening than your beast. Please reconsider the situation. Sir William Sinclair, Governor of Cordona. Okay. Okay, so, so then let's check our case book. Okay, so the tracks continue through the water at the forest entrance, and then Sherlock noticed Theodore's gown hanging on a branch, seemingly left by the elephant. I cannot pursue the creature any further at present. Okay, and then he found a set of keys in Theodore Gildan's dressing gown. Okay, so then I guess we could go back to the manor. Okay. Okay. So then let's go back to our map. So we've done all of that. So we'll go over here. Oh. Nice. Okay. Gildan Manor. Okay, let's have a look at those portraits. 
I can always recognize the spirit of a true artist. This young lady has a childish interest for her age. Oh, I think that's outside. Okay, let's go back. My name is Sherlock Holmes. Theodore Gildon was... Did you kill him? Did you kill the elephant? It's not in the yard anymore. It escaped into the forest. You can't let it go. What if it returns? I highly doubt that, Miss... Imogen Gildon. Please, I beg of you. Find that dreadful beast that killed my father. I suppose we do need to learn what happened. Tell me everything you know. Can you tell me what happened? From the very start. I was here, so I didn't see how it began. My father visits the enclosure every morning to wake up Goliath. Today, I heard the elephant scream. I've never heard such a horrifying sound. My heart stopped. I knew something was wrong. I looked through my window and saw how it... How it lifted my father up by his neck. I rushed downstairs. I saw it dragging my father, as if he were a doll. I threw stones at it. It dropped my father's body and charged outside, screaming. Its roar was almost human. I was frightened, so I ran inside and hid here. I'm sorry for your loss. That is a terrifying experience, Miss Gildon. I'm sorry you had to go through it. Thank you. Goliath must be caught, Mr. Holmes. Well, thank you for the information, Miss Gildon. I did have some questions for your father. Perhaps you might help me with them? I wasn't privy to much of my father's life, and it's very hard to think of anything at all with Goliath still loose. Please, Mr. Holmes. Very well. Do you mind if I ask you more questions if I find anything that might help? Anything to catch that monster. We haven't met before. Miss Gildon, I was on this island ten years ago, and your father knew my mother. I believe I even had the opportunity to ride that balloon outside. But I do not recall seeing you. I lived at my late mother's in Sheffield at the time. I'm in no spirit to reminisce right now. The elephant is out there. You've never heard the name Violet Holmes before? Perhaps your father... Please, Mr. Holmes. With that beast roaming free, I can't think of anything. Very well. Do we have evidence? No, not yet. Let's leave. I have to leave you for now. Ooh, three evidence updated. Okay. Okay, so Imogen's testimony. Imogen described how the elephant killed Theodore Gildan. She heard Goliath screaming. From her window, she could only see the animal lifting the body of her father. She rushed downstairs and saw the animal dragging him around. She threw stones at it, and the animal escaped after letting out a horrific, almost human scream. She ran back inside and hid in her room. She's shaken, but willing to provide more answers if we find anything else. Okay. Okay. So... She packed as much as she could carry. False idols? Oh, sounds utterly dreary. Mm. So idyllic. Enjoy your happily ever after before it stales. Oh, the same dull poses on all romantic photographs. Mm. Hey, Sherry, we need to talk. Oh. You found false idols. We need to find the remaining two. What does bazooka even mean? Would this paper be good for anything but blowing one's nose on? They're not rubbish, Sherry. There's something more. I'm serious. Very well. I doubt it'll be worth it, but I will find them for you, John. You'll thank me later. 
They're some of the most imaginative books I've ever read. What did you say? Speaking aloud helps me think. <laughs> A commendable effort to barricade the windows. I wonder if there's anything else. Yes. The nicest spot in the room. Mr. Gildon spent hours of his life right here. Staring at an elephant's backside. What a wonderful life. spectrum from the history of the Roman Empire to conspiracy theories of the French Revolution mother oh it's nice to see her young and smiling from before Mycroft was born our family loves to prod at the past Holmes's <laughs> desire to rake up the past is hereditary so they're very close then Partnership annulled with a single stroke of a pen. A catchy title. What's so special about this place? Another elephant? I should take a photograph of the plants. I don't want to carry them around. Okay. Excellent. And then... Let's have a look. Elephant's Man, Cortona Chronicle 1875. A local wealthy resident, Theodore Gildon, 55, has purchased an Indian elephant from a traveling circus. Mr. Gildon commented, It is a wonderful opportunity. There is no one on this island better suited to provide such a comfortable home for this elephant. It is a paradise for a noble creature. No longer will this animal be locked in a tent with clowns. He will be my companion from now on my second child, and I will protect him. Don't be jealous, people of Cordona. I am your best citizen. Only time will tell if this is a midsummer madness or not. The neighboring elite of Cordona are shocked to read the news, and furthermore, to hear the terrible trumpetings of the beast, but they are having to accept the eccentricity of one of Cordona's most powerful. Now, we can all say that the riches of our island have troubles to bear too, the same as the rest of us. His second child? An apparent son and heir, I'd say. Hmm. Relatively functional choice to replace the finger. Oh, the pungent stench of an animal. Did Theodore seek some pink elephants with this? I think Miss Gildon has barely matured. I think they were closer than you and me, John. Mm. I'm hurt. Why do I feel like... It's a vial with perfume. A perfume vial with a transparent substance inside and an engraved elephant's head on the side. It smells truly terrible. Whatever it is, it's clearly of animal origin. Given Mr. Gildan's eccentricities, I do not know what to expect. Okay, in the construction plan, the name A. Swift was listed as a partner, but has been crossed out. And then the Bazookaeology Trilogy. John has requested we locate the entire Bazookaeology Trilogy by Wallace the Orem. I found the first book in Imogen's room. This humiliation of the written word is unfathomably rather popular. I suppose I can at least attempt to understand why. A photo of Imogen with a young man on the back of the frame is a note. This victory is for you and you only. 1879 race finals for my lighthouse in the darkest storm. Paul. Oh. 
Imogen put all of her valuable possessions and luggage. From the manner in which she carelessly stuffed her clothes and jewelry into the bags, it is clear she has no travel experience. Okay. Alright. Oh, so this is false idols. Wallace to Oren brings you along in an explosive trip by the most crucial couple in the history of archaeology, Nabe and Laura. Follow the path of love, betrayal, and revenge in the first part of the trilogy of Bazookiology. Still muscled Nabe and flexible Laura attempt to find the lost city of the moon. However, there is a somewhat oversized monocle that has been focused on them since their journey to the center of the earth, Dr. Madbum. Giant underwater spiders, poisonous parrots, and bloodthirsty mummies will test the luck and knowledge of our characters. Will our beloved pair of scientists survive? Find out in this first part of the adventures of Nave and Laura. So we have to find the other two books of this. Okay, and then Sherlock's parents were friends with Theodore Gilden for a long time. They lived adventurous lives, traveling the world in search of antiquities. This photo has been in Gildan's study for decades, a reminder of fun times past, or perhaps a symbol of regret. Okay, so I think there's nothing more in here. Let's go back to Imogen's room. Let's provide evidence. While with perfume. And, uh, which part of the elephant is in here? It's quite pungent. Oh, that. It's elephant sweat. Father believed that it might replace traditional amber grease. Well, that's true entrepreneur spirit. Okay, so the vial contains the sweat of the elephant. It could have been worse. Um, I'm kind of interested at this photo. I found this. Who's this young lad next to you, your faithful knight? Paul. He's my pirate. He's not really a pirate. I just call him that. It probably sounds very silly. Your secret is safe in my hands. Does Paul work somewhere? What is his surname? His name is Paul Perks. He and his yacht Whirlpool are the champions of the Salacia Yacht Club. He sails there. I'll show you where it is on the map if you need to meet him. A yachting champion? Oh, well, that will be a first. I prefer dry land. And so does my suit. Okay. I kind of want to ask A Swift, whether... is this name familiar yeah. to you? Your father had it removed from this plan. Oh, that's Arthur Swift. I've seen him a couple of times here. He works with my father in the old city, digging up something ancient. He is an archaeologist? That's the word, yes. But to be truthful, I really don't think Mr. Swift is fit to be one. I've just learnt a lot about archaeology from my favourite book series. Oh, they are page turners. Inspirational, I'm sure, but would you happen to know where this Mr. Swift might be found? I don't, but perhaps you can find out somewhere. My father's work with him is all official. Lots of boring legal papers with signatures and stuff. Okay, so Imogen clarified that Arthur Swift is the name of Mr. Gildan's business partner. They were working together on a project in the old city. She doesn't know anything else, but said that this partnership involved a lot of paperwork. And Paul Perks is a professional yachtsman who sails the Whirlpool at Silesia Yacht Club in Southern Grand Saray. Okay, and let's... How can you read something like this? Uh -oh. It's hard to swallow, and that's not due to the hard cover. You're hardly serious. Any library without Nabe and Laura is incomplete. If you can read, then these books are an absolute must. Love and adventure. They're about life. Oh, I wasn't aware that exploding pyramids were a part of daily life on Cordona. You haven't seen life, so you might try reading about it at least. Mm. And just pack These bags. bags of yours, it looks as if you've packed your entire room. Were you planning on going somewhere? My partner and I, we wanted a change, a fresh start abroad. But now I have to stay here. Here, an orphan. Okay, so Imogen told me she had plans to leave with her partner. They wanted to start a new life abroad. Okay. I have to leave you for now. 
Ooh, mine pass glue. Okay. All right. So we've figured that out. Okay, let's go for the Mind Palace. Okay, so Fatal Damage. Hmm. Check out the ivory bots. jobs. A royal suite for a favorite pet. Plenty of food to satisfy even the most fastidious. Okay, so... Let's go to Extra Extra. Moving trainer. Let me go to the yacht club. Excuse me, just one question. That's a question I can answer. Okay, Yacht Club members mentioned a poor Mr. Race, and no one has seen him since morning. He might be in his room in a workshop south of the Yacht Club. Okay. Bandages. Has someone been hurt? I think Paul was in. Where would a champion hide a key? Oh no, that's John. Champions Whirlpool, Pool's bread and butter.
Warning to cover your ears. We can become pirates and show them what should be stored in here. Is this is the second book. Yes. Sales of hatred. I suppose there is something for everyone, including champions. Who knew archaeology could be so exciting? Exciting is certainly a word. Ah, is that it? We can become pirates and show them what should be stored in here. Ooh. Recently moved. I hope nice. Paul is more skilled at yachting than he is at hiding keys. Excellent. So then now I wonder... What would that open? Okay. Bloodied bandages. To earn big, you have to spend big. <laughs> Old betting slips. Paul always bets on Whirlpool. One victory after another. Rats in envelope. You gormless, gilly wet foot. You think you can leech off of my family, steal my money, exploit my daughter? This ends today. Your career is over. I shall give you one final warning. If you refuse to cooperate, you'll find yourself in deep water. Mr. Gildon wasn't mm. afraid to get his hands dirty. Okay. An interesting place for a message to a champion. You do not get to back out of our deal. You do not get to live on a whim. We need you to get us fresh leaves for a tea party. If you have any questions, the boys will be keeping an eye on you at the race. Additional earnings to sweeten the victory. Mm. Okay. A box full of darts. Each has a needle and can be loaded with drugs. Hmm. An expensive set of tools for woodwork. An amateur wouldn't know how to use these. Shipbuilding, shipwrights tricks, sail weaving. area room for a champion there's no incentive to put in any effort there's an envelope and the key one question one answer bravo sherry Wallace Arm continues his experimental trilogy with an innovative second part concerning the most crucial couple in the history of archaeology, Nabe and Laura. They have achieved success, although their victory comes at a cost. Dr. Madbone's true identity has forced Nabe to question his life and that of everyone around him, even Laura. His greatest enemy is his father, his greatest friend might be a monster. 
In the second installment, readers will learn more about the scientific past of both characters, how they survived for so long in the heart of the desert, and if archaeology can resurrect the dead. For after all, Dr. Madbone was only a pawn in the game of the larger threat, Sir Dredd. Okay. Undeniably psychotropes. Not for toothache, I think. A typical tea tin. I wonder what he has for biscuits. Interesting. So the storage room held evidence that Paul is involved in organized crime, smuggling psychotropics on the yacht. Hmm. Okay. What? Oh. Oi! Hands off my possessions before you lose your fingers. Are you illiterate? The rules are written everywhere. Ah, Mr. Perks, the cabin boy himself. Champion, you mean. I was right. You are illiterate. I think a couple of shiners might teach you. One last chance. Who are you? Hmm. I am Imogen's friend? I'm Sherlock Holmes, a friend of our mutual acquaintance, Miss Imogen. Look, you artichoke. Imogen has no friends. Except for me. If you must try to insult people, it's better to know the meanings of the words that you're using. You fancy you could teach a sailor to swear? Go ahead. Show me how inventive you are. Stand still for a moment. Okay, let's observe. Smooth Adam's apple. Female. Bandaged arm. Payback or accident. Wide hips and thighs. Developed female body. Mm. Oh. It's something hard. Okay. Paul Perks is a woman who disguises herself as a man to achieve a higher social position. She uses the privileges of men to pursue her personal goals. She uses her career in yachting as cover to smuggle goods for various gangs in Cordona. Her injured arm reflects the dangerous nature of her life. Despite her fearless exterior, she is frequently in trouble due to her connections with the criminal underworld. And yet, she has earned a place in that world as Paul. I see no reason to disclose to anyone otherwise. Hmm. Professional smuggler or professional yachtswoman. I feel like professional yachtswoman. I'm impressed by how well a woman can handle a yacht and endure so many hardships on the open sea. The revelation of your nature could well humiliate so many rich men here. Not to mention how you have broken the rules. But I understand. You've done this to forge a real career in the sport. But tell me something. Has no one asked you why you don't grow a beard? Shh! Have you been following me? You better not be wanting to end my career, because I swear you'll regret it if I get out it. Damn you, Paul. Uh -oh. I'm sick of... Who's this peacock? Does he know who I am? I definitely know who you are not. You're not a dictionary reader, at least. I wanted to see how you... pals interact with each other in your natural habitat. But I'm afraid I have to interfere. Oh. I couldn't miss the party. 
Don't bother moving. You've lost. Snuff's ready. Are there more? Oh. Time to knock this guy out. No more crime for you and give him the pepper snuff. Cry, you'll live. Are there more? <laughs> Can overcome the brute now. I thought we were again. Oh no. Put you six feet under. Overcome him, don't. I'm coming. The snuff's ready. Give him the pepper snuff. Oof. And there's no reward for risking our lives. Paul's explanation will suffice. Okay. Okay. I was attacked by criminals who are after Paul. He owes me an explanation. Oh my goodness. Paul's elbow injury may have been sustained by falling on Theodore Gilden's shed. Okay. Where is Paul? Your fellow mariners have a strange way of showing hospitality. They were not my friends. Are you sure? I would rather risk my neck for someone who's at least honest and thankful. Perhaps then don't enter someone's life and be so judgmental, pretending you're better than they are. Then give me your perspective and allow me to see through your eyes. Where were you this morning? What were you doing this morning, Miss Perks? Don't call me that. I'm a champion. I was sailing. The other club members told me that you missed the race this morning. Do champions not need to practice? Oh, you've talked with them already. No, I wasn't racing. I visited the doctor after that attack on me. And then I had to honor the deal with the bandits you just took care of. Theodore Gilden is dead. I tried to tell you before, but your partners interrupted. Have you heard the news? Theodore Gilden is dead. Do you have anything to say? Well, what a shock. To me, he was an angry old ogre. Good riddance. Was it Goliath that killed him? Did it crush him? Break his bones? Come on, tell me. I want all the details. You have an unusual way of showing grief. Imogen wouldn't appreciate that. But yes, the animal could have been involved. It's poetic in a way, isn't it? It takes a beast to kill a monster. I wish I could have been that elephant. You should be more cautious. This business of yours, you should be more careful. Ruining your life at such a young age is ridiculous. I am careful. Except for you. No one has noticed where I store the smuggled goods. If the police arrive, there's no link to me. It's common storage, not exclusively mine. Provide evidence. Um, this one. You smuggle illicit psychotropes on your yacht. Not a delivery for the hospital, I'm sure. Of course not. I've had to cut corners to earn some money. How might a person afford to pay for a yacht in an honest way? I don't know, although I'm smart. The buyers are my customers. Adults who are willing to pay for their pleasure, or weapons for jewels. Whatever they want me to deliver. Nothing criminal. 
Well, it's your lucky day. I'm not here because of smuggling. Have you tasted this tea yourself? I wouldn't have been a champion if I had used it. It's just a side business that keeps my career afloat. It's quite expensive to compete in yachting. Sometimes I cut corners. Such as fixing whirlpool yourself? Exactly. And sometimes I just have to pay. That's how I earn money. I don't sell slaves or take the last man gear from a poor family. Okay, so Paul worked for a criminal organization on the side, smuggling goods for money. They see it as a necessary evil to amortize the costs of their true passion, yachting. Okay. This one. Look what I found. A box full of darts. Hey, that's mine. I confiscated it. These darts appear to be filled with something. Poison? How powerful is it? It's strychnine. Enough to instantly kill a small rodent. I haven't tried it on a human. Yet. I hope you know what you're doing. Could it immobilize a larger animal? Say, mm. an elephant? I've never tried. But I have wondered. Okay, so Paul claims to load the darts with strychnine and uses them to kill rodents. This it one. seems as though Theodore Gilden hung a sword of Damocles over your life and career. Were these only words or something more serious? Pfft. Check my forearm. Pulled muscles and bruises. Small cuts. Nothing that you could call serious. I doubt that a man in his late fifties could wrestle you. It wasn't him. He behaved like a rat and hired brutes. His boys tried to lock my hands behind my back, but I was faster and I escaped. Was he so protective of his daughter, or was it your feminine secret that provoked him? My guess is that he was protecting his property. As he saw it, he owned Imogen, and he treated her like a piece of furniture. He didn't want his daughter to be loved by anyone. What's more painful is that Theodore didn't allow me to love his daughter. Typical. I'm not sure that your relationship with Imogen could be described as typical. Are you afraid of a woman in trousers? Now that's typical of men. Okay, so Paul confirms that they came into conflict with Theodore Gilden over Imogen. Okay. Hmm. Between yachts, darts, and notes from bandits, I've discovered many fascinating facts about you. But this, an installment of Nabe and Laura's adventures, why did you sully your library with this? It's a gift from Imogen. I didn't buy it. I might have turned a couple of pages, but nothing more. I swear. I will give you the benefit of the doubt, but your literary taste has put you on my blacklist. This one. A charming picture. I've heard that champions do often pose with their trophies. Cheeky. It is a lovely trophy, though. I'm sure you will agree. What is it that you like most about her? Her naivety? Her father's money? A somewhat difficult choice. Especially now that her father is out of the equation. Okay. Patch Imogen packs. doesn't strike me as an industrious young lady, so I find it strange that she was busy packing up all her belongings when Mr. Gilden died. That's some um, favorable wind in your sails, isn't it? Is it so suspicious that a couple might embark on a trip? I wanted to thank her, so we planned to go traveling. A Theodore-free place. Without elephants. The timing of it is suspicious, however. Your lady friend becomes an orphan and heir, and there's a planned trip directly afterwards. An improvised romantic dinner will never please a spoiled girl. A planned voyage might. It's not spur of the moment. Okay, so Paul said that they wanted to leave Cordona to escape from Theodore's influence. Hmm... Does this knife seem familiar? I didn't find it in your competitor's back, to be clear. This knife is as blunt as your humor. It's a boson's knife, but it's not mine. I wouldn't be so careless as to mislay my tools. Okay, so Paul told me the knife does not belong to them. Apparently, they are careful with their tools and would never mislay one. Okay, is there anything else that I need to ask? I'm clueless. Mm. A. Swift. Are you familiar with this name? 
The gentleman had business with Mr. Gildon. Likely just another strange and wrinkled fellow like old Gildon was. Perhaps this swift person has a rhino, and they wanted to see which pet was stronger. In other words, I don't know who he is, but I bet he's crazy like Theodore. I doubt that Cortona has ever boasted a battle arena for that size of mammal. You have an interesting imagination. Okay. I don't know what this means. Let's leave. I have to leave you for a moment. Don't sail too far away. Okay. So five evidence updated. Alice. Theodore threatened Paul and Theodore attacked Paul. So Theodore attempted to destroy Paul. Gildan was highly motivated to destroy Paul's career and well-being, even going so far as to hire criminals. Okay. Okay, I think... Okay, why don't we head back? Okay, let's quickly head back to Imogen and kind of let her know what we've learned so far. Have you seen what your father sent to Paul? This is despicable. My father was never a gentleman, but this crosses the line. I knew that father wasn't fond of Paul, but this... This is just awful. If only he could have seen how good Paul he is to me. Okay, so Imogen was shocked to see how her father's threats went. Mm. Are you aware that Paul smuggles drugs for a dangerous gang? Mr. Holmes, I've already told you. I call him a pirate in play. He's not an actual pirate. He's a champion and a brave gentleman, not a thug. Let us agree to disagree on that, but don't be surprised if one of his clients knocks on your door. Hmm, so she doesn't want to believe that Paul could do something like this, like smuggling um, for a criminal organization. Hmm. Did you observe anyone else in the yard? Any of your servants, perhaps? Servants? Do you imagine that we would have any with Goliath? No one wishes to work in this house, even for double pay. I didn't see anyone else. Only my father and that diabolical beast. Okay, so Imogen didn't notice anyone else at the crime scene. I'm afraid I can't add anything useful. I don't have any thoughts on this. I don't have any thoughts on this. I have nothing to say about this. Had Goliath been aggressive before? It's dangerous, but it was never aggressive near my father. My father would do anything for Goliath. All the elephant had to do was clap its ears. You envied him, the elephant, I mean. Our house is called the House of Ivory. I've heard some people refer to me as the Ivory Girl, and my room stinks of the animal, as if it's me who lives in a pen and not Goliath. It's not envy, Mr. Holmes. It's just incredibly difficult to live like this. Okay. What is the key evidence? Okay, so Imogen considers Goliath dangerous, but he had never been aggressive with Theodore before. Hmm. Okay, so all evidence collected. Hmm. So everyone, I'm gonna end this video here. It seems like the case of the Gilded Cage is a slightly longer case to solve. So at least we've done the first part of it and we were able to 
question pull perks. So then I guess for the next part, we're going to go and question a swift in regards to the ivory baths construction plan. And then I have a feeling that's when we will be able to solve the case. But for now, I do hope that you've enjoyed this. If you haven't already, please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And I will see you all into the next video. See ya!